The turning and turning in the widening greer. The falcon cannot hear the falconer. Things fall apart. The center cannot hold. Mere anarchy is loosed upon the world. The blood dim tide is loosed, and everywhere the ceremony of innocence is drowned. The best lack of conviction, while the worst are full of passionate intensity. What's up, everybody? It's your girl, Miss Fia the Diva, and I'm back here to do another post show wrap. God, this show is awesome. I love the quad. I'm so here for it. Uh, but this is going to be a review and discussion of episode three for season one called Things Fall Apart. What I just read to you was an excerpt from W.B. Yeats's uh, The Second Coming. How I was introduced to this poem was not necessarily just the entirety of the poem, but if you've ever read Things Fall Apart by the Nigerian author, um, I don't want to chop up his name, but he wrote a book called Things Fall Apart in high school. I had to read that book, and I always found that very interesting and very vexing, and I think this was uh, an appropriate title for this particular episode. It's just a whole whole lot that went down in just one episode and the last two minutes of the episode were like what the hell just happened did the president just lose control of everything I mean girl your life already was a hot mess but girl your students done gone wild Dr. Diamond about to be dead to the bed but all he care about is the damn band a uh, little Tink Tink, a.k.a. Noni, running around here being divisive and being a little intermeddler. I'm just like, these kids are crazy. Cedric Hobbs and deprecated on the microphone right there in front of everybody because the judge that didn't want to help him appeared to be whispering about him. I was like, Lord, yeah, girl, you shouldn't have put up a grieving man. He got up there and pretty much did what Laurel did on how to get away with murder at Lil Wes's memorial. I was like, Oh my God, I missed that episode because Laura got the time. Why you crying? Why you crying? Did you know him? You didn't know him. I was like, girl, calm down now. That's pretty much what Cedric did. But let's start from the top of this episode. Uh, we really didn't get to see any of the reoccurring characters that we see like... That fine-ass football coach. I don't remember seeing him in the episode. I also didn't see strip club owner. Let me not call him strip club owner. Let's call him the gentleman's club owner with the nice-ass catering and buffet. All right. Dr. Fletcher, Eva Fletcher, Madam President, is hosting a fundraiser at the president's mansion and trying to get into these people's pockets to get chair funds for various departments and just to raise funds for the school because the school is it. Uh, it's in the red, y'all. It is not in the black. I mean, it is on struggle like bankruptcy struggle so she needs all the money and that's one of the things i always find interesting is that so alumni we really it's especially for schools that may have given you a lot like a free ride at least you could donate a dollar every month or something me personally right now i no longer donate to my alma mater because i owe them over two hundred and twenty four thousand dollars now uh that's accumulation of interest and and i just can't pay twelve hundred dollars a month okay but if you're in a position to help, I totally think that you should donate to your alma mater uh, because, shit, I'm going to be honest, we don't know where education going to go. We might have to all just be learning off the YouTube, YouTube University. It might be where we all end up, which is actually not a bad idea because, honestly, I'm grateful for my education and I'm grateful for my degrees. But in some ways, I feel like, what the hell I go to school for because I'm still in debt. It was supposed to create for me a better life. I get more no's and no's and no's on top of no's uh, for seeking the higher salaries, that type of thing. It's like I have this extensive educational background, not to mention experience, but it's like, did going to law school really serve a good purpose? You know, I question that all the time, but I think I'm getting ready to use my degree here pretty soon for civic matters. We'll see. Anywho, let me get back on task. First of all, shout out to my girl, Kieran. Uh, we had a nice laugh on Twitter tonight at the expense of uh, one of the uh, main characters, Noni. If you remember, Noni is the young lady 
who uh, basically took her old roommate's spot. Now, the question we all, I had was, do you think that if she knew something about Ebony's assault, uh, was it a setup? And now with what she's doing by playing the intermeddler, um, is she now trying to vindicate uh, herself or even seek vengeance upon the band member, Danny? I think he's the drum major. He's evil as hell. Did y'all see how he ate that powder puff? I was like, God damn, he got angry. No wonder. Okay, whatever. Oh, so little Noni, little Tink Tink, she running around being the uh, a little band ambassador or the freshman flunky is more of it. But I prefer to call her a band ambassador. Go Wildcats. And he's just talking to her like she's something you find on the bottom of the shoe, which is basically like really it's hazing, but some people would call it pledging or proving yourself for this wonderful institution that is the band. But uh, the president is trying to fundraise. Uh, she is in for a lot of surprises. Uh, first of all, just to get out the basics of everyone else. Okay, so y'all remember, I think his name is Vice President Petaway. Him and Dr. Diamond were trying to conspire how to get rid of, as they call her, Black Ivy because she went to Ivy League. She did not attend an HBCU. We learned that he, they pretty much, Dr. Diamond has kind of let that whole idea go. And that he has his own plan. But Vice President Petaway is trying to figure out whether he wants to leave GAMU or stay. Because he was at another institution about to sign and he realized that he wanted to stay. The reason why I don't know. And with what happened at the end of the episode, I'm beginning to wonder if he may have had something to do with what is going on. The band, uh, Dr. Diamond brings a little quartet set in, and I don't know who the female vocalist was, but her voice was amazing. She reminded me of one of my friends, actually. But, you know, her voice was amazing. I was like, oh my God, who is this? And you, I can't really find anything, on, but just online. So comment down below if you know who the vocalist was in tonight's episode. Dr. Fletcher's marriage is pretty much over. So, you know, she's pretty much been making time and keeping time with Six Pack, a.k.a. Jason King, I believe is his actual name. And so she, he kind of wasn't supposed to be at the fundraiser, but while she's in the middle of talking to some potential donors, he shows up with this other woman. Come to find out he is now the TA in the psychology department with Dr. Jackson. I said, I bet he give him a Dr. Jackson too. She looked like his type. And so, of course, they played it off like they didn't know each other, but she took him off to the side and wanted to check him. Y'all, Six Pack is nasty. Oh, he's so nasty he was like she was like what are you doing here da, da, da. and he was like you better watch your tone you better watch your tone before what did he say before my tongue ends up on one of your nipples i was like oh oh he's so nasty because he wanted to get some he said five minutes that's all i need i was like damn that is a quickie okay I was like, Dr. Fletcher, you know you want to get up on that, okay? But I know she feels uncomfortable because it is awkward. She does have a uh, reputation to uphold. Good Black Ivy. And so that's an issue. He also seems to be flirting with Sydney, although I think he's just doing that to just get under her skin, honestly. Of course, Sydney is like, ooh, you cute. I want to give who this mama. Ooh, he a grad student. Did you know that mama? I was like, oh my God, this is going to be some weird stuff. Girl, what if that turned out to be your stepdaddy? Because Dr. Fletcher wants Jason to exercise discretion, but honestly, I don't think he knows what that means. And he's like a damn hound dog for her. I was like, like, girl, you better be get it white, get it how you live, because your husband don't want you. You might as well go for the gusto shit. How uh Dr. Eva Fletcher got her groove back because he was basically she was like, I got a party going on downstairs, and he was like, nah, I want to start a party down there. And I was like, Oh my god, he needs help. Dr. Diamond, we learn. I'm like, you need to stop being evil and start trying to take care of your uh health. We learned, if you remember last week, he had some sort of pain and, and difficulty breathing. And I guess Danny, the drum major, must know about this because you remember he immediately stepped in. So now we learn when Dr. Diamond is out here with his side piece, because I didn't see no ring on her finger, I saw a ring on his finger. She was like, you know, I'm here for you, you want to share with me? And so he was like, I have what non-small cell... Uh, 
lung cancer and he was like and i've never smoked a day in my life i was like child it's some stuff in the air that would kill us all and i was i was like that's just really terrible but he like is not even concerned about it he was like i gotta worry about this band like his whole life is like the band that's all he cares about but i'm like i mean if you gonna die just die happy doing what you're doing okay one of the things i didn't like in this episode, not because I, of the writing or anything like that, but one of the things I don't appreciate, and I like that they put this in here, is how some of us will treat one another. So, Dr. Fletcher thought it would be a good idea for Cedric Hobbs to attend the fundraiser because she wanted him to present his spoken word piece that he did as his written statement. Uh, to get into the university, which was actually a very good. It was about life in Chicago because that's where he's from. And he basically told her, I don't want your sympathy. I don't want you to tell me how to feel. And I was like, that's another thing when you talk about, well, how do you grieve? There is no right or wrong way to grieve. And it's always awkward when someone dies anyways because you're like, what do I say? What do I do? You know, I mean, all I can offer you is my condolences. If you want a hug, a scripture, God's close to brokenhearted but I was glad that Dr. Fletcher did tell him you know feel however you want to feel and so I was glad to see that she really is trying to be that president that is an anchor for her students uh, another thing that I liked that they brought out into the light is our HBCUs are being have been integrated for some years now you know you don't have to just be black to uh, participate and so one of the potential donors had an issue with little Madison. Uh, that is Sydney's roommate, the little white girl that's in here. And she was like, well, when I was in school, uh, I didn't even have money for books. I had to borrow the books and I graduated almost at the top of my class. And, you know, I would think that you could have found to give money to others. And I'm just like, really? Times have changed, different president, different parties, different people. If they want to get a little girl a full ride, so be it. But she was just kind of rude to her, and I was like, look, she here just getting education like everybody else. I don't know what's wrong with y'all. Who knows? Maybe she might end up being a big-time contributor. You never know what somebody could come into, so shut the hell up. Girl, if we can't get your money, we'll go down here to one of these banks, to their community affairs office, and their foundation, and get some money, okay? Forget you. Bye, Mrs. Pratt. For some reason, my friend Kieran, my new Twitter friend, she seems to think that we need a toaster for a little Tink Tink. Every time I say little Tink Tink, she wants to give, get her a toaster. She said, I swear she's a little engine that could. Sydney, who is Dr. Fletcher's only child and her daughter, I think that the judge's son, uh, that is Cedric Hobbs' roommate, has a thing for her. As a matter of fact, they showed a scene where they were debating, and Sydney is actually a uh, very well versed, a very intelligent young lady. She just has this nasty attitude going on. Now, as I said at the top of this video, uh, Lil Tink Tink, aka Noni, is being an intermeddler. Uh, she is doing one of the things I loathe. Um, we've talked about this before in other videos where you have someone who's a go-between where a lie eventually becomes the truth. It starts off as a lie by, as a lie by the intermeddler and then it becomes truth because you have said something that you in fact said, but you would only have said it had you not been prompted to say it by the intermeddler. Okay, follow me. So anyway, Tink Tink told the football players that Danny had been saying bad things about them. She told Danny that the football players had been over there saying bad things about them. Like any man who would put an instrument in his mouth, who knows what else he would put in his mouth. I was like, really, Noni? That's going a little bit too far. Uh, but you know, you get what you serve, Danny. Because Danny, you have been a total ass to this girl. And she's not all that stable. And as one of my uh, viewers on YouTube noted in the previous video, I realize now what's wrong with her. She's an overachiever, socially awkward, possibly sheltered. And so that's probably why she is the way that she is. But she also is kind of a little trickster, uh, which I learned more about tricksters uh, in a lecture I attended on Sunday. Uh, she's just totally slick with it. Madison, real quick, Madison, baby girl, your little boyfriend, let him go, move on. Maybe you and, and Bo John, or maybe one of you and these little black dudes can get together and make some shit work. Your boyfriend gone. 
the wind done gone, boo, he ain't coming back no more. Okay? Okay, he gone. Some, he probably in some frat house living it up, just like Sydney said. Because Sydney was like, girl, get your life. Shit, he ain't, he ain't worried about you. He ain't in no ditch, girl. He probably in some frat house laid up with some woman, okay? I was um, disappointed in how Cedric handled uh, the whole uh, spoken word bit because she was he was the special guest. He was the headliner of this fundraiser. And when he saw Blue Blood's dad, he kind of snapped and went into... And basically, he got them all together. I mean, it was not the appropriate time. But basically, he told them where to go, how to go. I said, damn, he deprecated on your microphone. Shit. So, needless to say, you probably felt like you were in an altered universe. Like, is this the freaking, like, Twilight Zone? What the hell just happened? This party just went left. I mean, it turned straight savage. Next thing you know... Thanks to Lil Tink Tink, the damn football player versus the band. They done got into it. Yeah, you think because you done won some games, drew out that we the band just because you can play a fl I was like, okay, no. And then a fight broke out. And then all these people in their nice suits and stuff just sitting up there looking like, Lord, look at these savages they got on this campus, Lord. Why? I mean, it just, it was a hot ass mess. I was like, mm -mm. I like how Madison asked well, Sydney, like, why do you hate your mother so much? And she says, I don't hate her. She's my mother. And I was like, okay, little Hillary, whatever. I don't get it. But like I said, I know she's hurt. So it's coming from a place of hurt. Same thing that happened to Cedric Harbs. His reactions are coming from a place of hurt. So, um, you've got two hurt young people and it's going to get even more messed up starting next week. There is a viral video that is released that shows a young woman being sexually assaulted. And you know who this young woman is? It is Sydney. She completely went into meltdown mode because Madison's like, oh my God, look at this video. And it was Sydney. She's like, oh my God, that's me. And I was like, so when was she sexually assaulted? Was it? while she was out drinking and passed out but I know Madison was with them I thought but either way next week is going to be a series of just what the hell why oh god this is too damn much I was like y'all giving us too much like can we get it now can we get it now was Sydney sexually assaulted or was she a consenting party based upon what I saw in the preview she was not she was probably drunk or drugged out of her mind I'm curious to know who did it could it possibly have been blue blood I don't know and the thing that I said and who released the video was it the vice president was it Dr. Diamond or someone we're not even considering like who would have released a video my only issue or concern with this now is that we're going to have victim blaming and shaming because remember in one of the was it the first episode or whatever she was at the frat house playing strip poker and got so drunk she almost was close to alcohol poisoning so her credibility is going to be called into question. Cedric Hobbs is going to serve little Blue Blood, his roommate, and let him know what's real about his hero dad. He was like, my dad helped you. He was like, no, boo-boo, your daddy did not help me, okay? Jasmine Guy's character, who was supportive of uh, President Eva Fletcher, all of a sudden seems to be getting in her ass. Okay, she's like, oh, what? how will this school ever survive while you're here and when you're gone? Okay, I was like, oh, shit. I was like, oh, this too much. This too much. One more thing I forgot to note about the quads episode. So at the end of this episode in the previews, I don't know if Ebony returns or if she's uh, just there to visit. Who knows? I think her and Cedric going to probably end up getting together because they clicked so well. But she looked at Noni, little tink tink, and she was like, Heffa, you the one who took my spot. I was like, girl, yeah, she took your spot. As soon as your head hit the concrete, she was after your spot. That's what friends are for. So I am so here for the quad. And let me know your thoughts on this week's episode. Thumbs up this video. Be sure to subscribe. And I will see you guys next week, I suppose, to talk about uh, episode four. It's going to be called Quicksand. Is there a book called Quicksand? I don't know.
But either way, comment down below. Let me know what you all thought about this episode. And shout out to the young man. I believe his name is Jake Allen that plays uh, Bojan. He watched my video last week and he said he enjoyed my review. That makes me feel good doing these reviews. Anywho, you all have a great night, day, evening, whatever time you're watching this video. I have been Miss Sophia the Diva and this has been a review of The Quad, Episode 3, Things Fall Apart. Stay fabulous and you've been all that.